back at it again. Welcome. We're so glad you're watching. Uh, we have another great story for you this week. We have another story from the book of Acts. And we know what Jesus has done so far. He's died. Come back. He's revealed himself to the disciples a few times, showing up, breaking bread with them, doing all sorts of stuff. And today, after he's promised them that he's going to give them an advocate, he's finally going to ascend. And we're going to see that story today. And we got some real special effects today, don't we? We do. We got some good stuff for you. So, Harvey, are you ready? Are you ready, Amelia? Yeah. Good. Go team. Go team. So Jesus had returned to them, he'd eaten with them, and he'd appeared to them in the houses and on the road, and now he was gathering with them for what would be the last times. He had promised them he would soon be sending the Spirit to them. Well, gang, it's been a treat, but I've got to be hitting the old dusty trail. This is it! This is it! I assume you're going to restore the kingdom of Israel, yes? Oh, he's going to restore it, all right. We're going to restore this whole world. This is it. Pizza every day. Well, well, it's not really for you to know, to know the time and place that this thing kicks off, truly. But one thing is clear. The time for you to receive the power of the Holy Spirit is coming up. You will be my witnesses. You're going to do this thing just like I promised from the ends of the earth. You will be my messengers, my ambassadors. You're going to do great. And that's when it happened. He began to fly away. What is going on? He's doing this thing. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I will be back in a jiffy. You can do this. You're gonna do great. Goodbye, disciples. <laughs> Meanwhile, in heaven. That was great exercise. Wasn't it? They loved it. Man, did you see all their faces? Look at them. They're still looking at me. They're trying to find me in the clouds. That is so cute. What do you think he means by a jiffy? What are we talking, 20 minutes? I figure he could get whatever he needs in about, yeah, you know, as fast as he likes. I mean, he's Jesus, he'll be back. My guess is two days. What if it's even longer than that? Oh, I think he's coming back. Nope, that's a bird. Okay, okay, maybe the exit was a little too dramatic. They're very hung up on the clouds. Regardless, I think we should stay put and keep an eye out, okay? Yeah. Oh, I totally agree. Yeah. Let's, I think, I think just, just stay, stay put. put. Best idea. Uh, are you a disciple of Jesus? Yup. Um, my baby, it, it, something's wrong. It's, it's sick. I thought maybe you could heal it. Well, can you wait a second? Because I'm waiting for Damon to come back. What? Soon they could have helped her. I hope she, Jesus comes back soon. That baby looked pretty sick. Uh, hmm. She's still looking for me in the clouds. That's that's interesting. I just feel so directionless. I lost my job. I don't know how I'm gonna feed my family. I don't know how I'm gonna eat. <laughs> I think he'll be back pretty soon. What's that? Don't worry about it. What? What? They're not even gonna help him? Guys, come on! Stop looking for me up here! There's people all around you! Come on, guys! You know what you're supposed to do! Hm. He's coming back. It'll be any minute now. You know, what's, what's the meaning of all this? Like, isn't life more than just getting a job and paying taxes? Huh, you're telling me, guys. I can promise you, life... Uh, this... There's way more to life than that, and it is absolutely beautiful. If you guys hang around a bit, uh, J-Man's gonna be coming back. Old Jesus, if you haven't heard of him, he's got great great stuff. Great stuff on the topic, but he's... 
He's not in right now. We're waiting. Oh, come on! You could have helped him! Tell him about me! That would have been... You, you can tell him! I already taught you guys! Any minute now. Sir, do you need us to head down there? Yeah, that might actually be what we need to do. Hey folks, uh, what are we looking at? Oh, don't mind us. We're just waiting on Jesus to come back out from the clouds. In the clouds, huh? Should be any minute now. Yeah, do you have, uh, nowhere to be or nothing to do? What are we doing here? Yeah, guy, it's called faithfulness. <laughs> we don't want him to show up and nobody be here for when he gets here. Uh, so you're just gonna wait and... Wait and wait and wait and wait? That's all you're gonna do? You're just gonna wait? I mean... But correct me if I'm wrong. He Didn't he leave you with some stuff to do? Like love your neighbor, bind up the broken, set the captive free? Yeah, like... Weren't you guys called to go to the ends of the earth with this thing? Like, proclaim the gospel? We can't do this by ourselves. He's gonna send you an advocate, remember? Yeah, guys, come on. I would... Look, he's coming back. He's gonna come back in dramatic fashion, I'm sure. You will be well alerted to it. I would start getting organized if I were you. I'd get back to the city, get things ready. You have stuff to do. You know your job. That sounds a lot like something Jesus would say. Let's do this! That's what they did. The disciples departed, and they went back to organizing and filling out their ranks. The first disciples, along with all the women who had traveled with them, set out again to change the world, to organize their efforts, to restore the world to grace and peace through their imitation of their teacher, caring for people in need, healing those who are sick, binding up the broken, setting the captives free, and through their proclamation, they would be changing the world, the good news that Jesus had risen. And that's what happened. Well, kind of. Actually, that's not exactly what happened. Uh, we added that stuff about what was happening while they were looking up. In the story, Jesus ascends, and while they are looking up, he goes through the clouds and they keep looking up and two robed individuals in white show up and have to remind them, hey, what you looking up for? Get back to it. And um, we thought about how interesting that was and how we wanted to highlight that moment. So we added those stories about like how they were so captivated by this new thing, this wild thing they'd seen that they needed to be snapped out of it so they could get back to their mission. I think that's a relevant thing to think about, about in our time, how strange things are and how different things are. We might need the same instruction of getting snapped back out of this thing and back into reality of this is real life and the mission is still the same. Lately, the world kind of feels like it's changed so fast and so much that the regular world is on pause and we're just trying to take it all in. Just give us a minute so then we can recalibrate. We start doing school at home, we start working from home, teaching at home. All these things are so different. We stopped doing our normal things and now it just seems like we're waiting to go back to normal. We thought we were a lot like the disciples. We just want to get back to normal. Once Jesus comes back, we can come back to earth. I think many of us are waiting for a break in this thing. Waiting for life to resume. Waiting for life to stop being on pause. I'm like that. I am I have FOMO real bad. I always feel like I'm missing out on something. Fear of missing out. I feel like the world just, something's happening and we're just not able to get involved in it. But like the angels in the story reminded the disciples, we really do have a responsibility for what's happening in our midst. Life isn't on pause, it's just different. The mission is still the same. The responsibility to love our neighbors, that's still the same. We still have the same mission. We need one another. We need to still 
care for one another. Nothing's on pause when it comes to our identity and who we are. We are called to work within this, through this. So the question is, what does that look like for you? What does it look like for you and your household? Maybe it's continuing to reach out to your neighbors. Maybe it's continuing those phone calls with loved ones, those faith times, those video calls, and making sure we're staying connected. Maybe it's thanking your teacher for a great school year, even if it did come with a lot of challenges. Maybe it's continuing to thank first responders and people on the front lines of this thing who are helping out their neighbors. Maybe it's continuing to look out for those in need. And maybe it's just an opportunity to look in the midst of all this. How are we drawing closer as a community in a different way? How are we drawing closer in our households or in our families, creating new rhythms, asking ourselves, what's most important in this? How are we going to care for each other? Wait a minute, am I calling grandma more often now? Why haven't I been calling her that much before? Think about those things that have changed and realize life isn't on pause. We're just in this sort of recalibration of realizing we have a responsibility, even in the midst of this very strange unnerving, sad, frustrating thing. How are we blessing our neighbor? How are we growing closer? How are we enriching our time together as a family and maybe adding some more intentional time for prayer or faith formation, Bible study? I know all of you have been doing something in the midst of this, caring for somebody, looking out for somebody. And I love hearing those stories about kindness Love. I want you to know, when God looks at this, I am so certain God looks at how we're caring in the midst of this, and as inadequate as we can feel sometimes, like, ugh, we're just in this weird limbo. I want you to know, when we're caring for one another, when we're looking out for one another, I feel so confidently that God looks at that and smiles. And God goes, that's my people. So, uh, I'm wondering... What are you going to be doing this week to bless one another? Um, how are you going to make today matter? How are you going to make tomorrow matter? How are you going to resist the, the maybe calling yourself to just be on pause for a little bit and think, you know what? Today's not a day to pause in loving my neighbor. Today's not a day to pause in responding to the needs of those around me. And know this. The spirit is blowing at your back, moving you in a direction of love all the time. And that's great news. Um, so yeah, have a great week, folks. Um, we'll see you next week for a special Pentecost service. Um, be on the lookout for that. Check out our website, goodshepherd.com slash worship. And check it out. It's going to be a really cool week um, as we celebrate the spirit, the birthday of the church, as the church has been emboldened with this Holy Spirit. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.